Welcome to the Columbia Economic Development Rethink Business Podcast. Um, very excited. Today we have a special guest with us. Her name is Starlet Miller, and she is an accountant and business consultant and the owner of Star Accounting and Business Solutions. And uh, I was going to talk to her a little bit um, about um, her professional journey and um, her path into entrepreneurship. So, um, good morning. Thanks good morning. for being here. Thank Appreciate you, for you having joining me. us. And um, so I was kind of checking out your LinkedIn page a little bit this morning and, and reading about your background and um, how you have um, worked for some other companies and have now recently, I guess in the past year and a half, branched off on your own and started your own business. So I um, was hoping you could tell us a little bit about your background, what got you started kind of in the accounting and consulting field and why you decided to start your own business after um, seven years working in that field. Sure, thank you. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and it's always nice when you get an opportunity to share your story. It's, it's a journey, so I'm still in it. Um, in the field of accounting, I initiated that field purely for the sake of numbers. Um, when I knew it was time to get my degree, business was a no-brainer. I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit. My mom was an, is still an entrepreneur, but was when I was a, a young child. So mm -hmm. I was working within a small business from a very young age, so that birthed that within me. Um, but when it was time to get my degree, I was trying to find the best industry that would convert to um, money at the end of the mm -hmm. day because I had to pay for college. I wasn't blessed to have a full ride scholarship or parents yeah. paying for schooling. So um, I checked BLS.gov to find out which um, industries paid the most and accounting was it and it aligned with my skill set. It turns out philosophy degrees won't get you very far. <laughs> these days. So. Yeah, so it was really, a, that's what initiated accounting for me. Uh -huh. um, and I've always been a working student. Uh, since I graduated high school, I had a full time job at a bank and went to school during okay. the day. Um, so it was really about the grind of making ends meet right away as well as furthering my education. So mm -hmm. that started the journey within accounting. Um, fast forward to now and a few years back, um, I was working for um, a bank and within the, I was able to get a position uh, as a management accountant mm -hmm. at one of our banks here in Columbia and it was a great position, mm -hmm. a great opportunity, um, but it was in that role that I realized that that type of accounting work was not for me. Mm -hmm. I would show up to work with tons of work to do, uh, GLs to balance and, and things to do, but I was bored out of my mind. So at the same time, I was also realizing um, and understanding myself as a professional and then as, just as a woman, what made me tick. And I realized that I needed to be a part of something greater. I needed to be had have a seat at a table and mm -hmm. make a greater impact. I'm a visionary just naturally. I love yeah. to be creative. That's something I've always known. I just didn't know how to channel it within um, my profession, which was within business. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I was able to shift from that position. I worked for a CPA firm and that was when I got my experience working with small businesses. Mm -hmm. And it was there that it really allowed me to experience working with people and working within different industries as well as exercising the skill sets that I've already obtained within accounting. Yeah. But what it provided me was something that made me excited was working with people in different industries. It was something different. I had to be creative. I was constantly relearning things and learning how it would apply to different mm -hmm. people. And that's what I lacked in the other setting and environment. So starting my own company meant that I owned my own time. And that was important for me then. It is still important for me now. It just means something different when you are owning and operating your own company. Yes. Um, you own your own time. So whether it's you're doing what you're supposed to or you're not doing what you're supposed to, it's still on you. Mm -hmm. um, but being a mom, as well as working and furthering my education, being there for her now is important. And owning my time means that I get a chance to be there for field trips or be there for her after That's school awesome. versus working 45, 60 hours a week outside of my home without her. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's a higher value for me personally. And I realized regardless to what I was gonna do, I was gonna work hard at it. I'd rather do it in a, in a way that it's, it makes sense for my lifestyle. And for me as a mom, that's extremely important. And I'm not gonna wait until 30, 40, 50, 60 years from now to do what yeah. really makes sense for me so that 
is why I decided to start my own um, company and it started off by just trying to do bookkeeping and avoiding going to a nine to five mm -hmm. and I realized there's a need for the services that I provide and I enjoy what I do so naturally it turned into a business yeah and I, y I was gonna ask you a little bit about why you decided to start your own business but I think you touched on some of those points already but I mean what was how was that for you to go from you know there, there's, it's a, it takes a big leap of faith to go mm -hmm. from you know working somewhere where it's it's structured. There's kind of that that uh, regular you know getting paid every two weeks to now yeah. you you are really <laughs> accountable for for bringing it in and delivering and then it, you know in some cases even making sure that you are getting paid by the client when yes. you're done with the work. So yep. I mean, how was that for you to kind of just emotionally just jump into that? Sure. Like, well, I'm still in my first 12 months of of operating. 100% on my own, so I'm still figuring this out. I mean, the process of proposal engagement, setting the yeah. stage for your clients and making sure that you are paid for your time. Mm -hmm. um, and then shaking off the impost imposter syndrome of who am I to do this kind of thing as well. So it, it's something that I'm still learning to perfect as I grow something greater than myself, because the goal is not just to replace the salary for myself, the goal is to hire other people, yeah. set a culture, for my organization that'll help do the same thing as done for me for other women or mm -hmm. men or whomever. So that's really the greater purpose, it's not just about me. But making the shift, I, it's kind of hard to explain. It, it takes courage <laughs> for sure, but I know my backup plan is a position. I'm overqualified for the bookkeeping work or things that I've done and I know it's there. Mm -hmm. But I just got fed up with not being able to own my time. Mm -hmm. And personally, I've. I've gone through some changes in my personal life and I realized that now is the time to take control mm -hmm. and that's what I decided to do that's and awesome. it was just a matter of, of recognizing that there's value there and I provide value mm -hmm. through the feedback from the clients I've serviced working for someone else and it was just taking the jump and as soon as I did I gained support so that was confirmation that I was headed in the right direction yeah. so yeah um, and and I noticed through you know looking at your website so it's not just traditional accounting, bookkeeping mm -hmm. services, like you are working with your clients, um, kind of looking at their business processes, mm -hmm. identifying those areas, you know, where they could be more efficient, yep. where they can streamline things. So you're, you're kind of looking at it from front to end and helping them streamline things um, and, and get organized so that they can be more efficient and more productive and have better results as well. Um, so it's very focused on, on um, you know, their needs. What are some of the major problems your people are encountering, though? I mean, what do you kind of see from a general business perspective? Where are people um, missing the mark and where can they be more productive at? The average small business owner is still working in their business. Mm -hmm. So time is a huge, huge problem. Having the time to work on your business is the, the biggest issue and most, and I, I'm experiencing it as well. I am all departments currently mm -hmm. as a solopreneur. Um, but really having the mindset of creating efficient systems and processes preparing for your growth typically is not the mindset of the entrepreneur. They're in business for what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They're servicing their client and they're bringing in people to help service the client, but they're not working on building this machine yeah. of a business that will flow. So that is usually the biggest issue. And on top of that, they're not looking at their numbers. And um, often some people will see bookkeeping or accounting work as a means to your tax return because the IRS will knock on the door every year without fail. <laughs> but that shouldn't be the only reason why you're looking at your numbers, right? <laughs> if we wanna be reactive, sure, and we know we need to file our taxes, but what about your business? Mm -hmm. What's the five-year plan? What is a two-year plan? We've, we understand the plan, how are we gonna get there? Mm -hmm. The only way you're gonna determine that is if you take a look at what's already happened, and if you're a brand new business, it's even more vital to set up those systems and be able to understand your numbers. So what I help to provide is that quantitative data through their bookkeeping mm -hmm. and then also looking at what's happening operationally when if you're um, if you own a landscaping plumbing uh, type of business where you're servicing clients out in the fields and you have technicians that are going from one place to another across the Midlands mm -hmm. how are you optimizing their time and your time if yeah. you're taking the call to dispatch these um, guys out into the field or gals out into the field to service your customers we need to understand what's happening from point A all the way to point mm -hmm. F and for me, that naturally is just the way that my brain works. So it, it, it really excites me when I'm 
presented with a client yeah. who has no clue because then that's a problem that I you can, can solve. You can really identify those gaps. Right, and then once we identify the gaps, what I love is to pair that with the technology that's already doing the job of streamlining it. Mm -hmm. So there's so many third-party applications that help to automate your communication with your clients, whether mm -hmm. it's to send them a reminder about your appointment coming up, to send uh, feedback um, initiation, or at least to check in. Because I'm doing my job if I can help you as a business owner service your <coughs> customer or client more efficiently. And yes, we want to do the job, but we also want to provide great service. Yeah. And so you even help them identify the, the technology that can help them with their specific industry so that yes. you know they get they get tied in through that and they have automation and processes now. Yes. Why well, leverage technology for what it's what it's there for and there's so many options there. So my job is to research and find the key features mm -hmm. that'll pair up with the pricing that make yeah. the most sense for the business owner. And this is service industry as well as um, other industries. Yeah. And that, yeah. that's a that's a good strategy. I think some people you either love technology and you really mm -hmm. dive into that stuff or you're the person who's very technological averse and you need mm -hmm. someone like you to kind of come in and right. say, no, this thing can really be of use to you. Yeah, And even internally. So um, there are a lot of CRMs that will help to maintain your customer's information internally. And if you have a small team, you all need to be able to, to communicate efficiently about Mm -hmm. your client, your customer, and even create your internal workflows. Sure. So that's, again, we're all talking about time, optimizing your time, being more efficient. And my goal is to have the small business owner that's working in their business transfer to working mm -hmm. on their business. And that happens when you create the systems mm -hmm. in order to do that and then focus on growing their company. Mm -hmm. There seems to be kind of a resurgence of activity in the entrepreneurial community mm -hmm. here in Columbia, of which you're a part of now. And, um, uh, you know, just a lot of energy from young up and coming um, business owners such as yourself who are getting more active mm -hmm. and involved and engaged in the community. So um, from your perspective, what do you what do you think is kind of driving that interest and activity and kind of how does it feel to be a part of that community here? I think um, and this is this might be nationwide that entre the entrepreneurship has is grown and we on a society level almost received permission that it's okay to take this route and we're dealing with a different generation mm -hmm. who's taking control and what they're doing and thanks to social media and other platforms where we can be our own PR firm and market ourselves, we don't need permission from the news station to tell our story, yeah. it's really helped. But here in Columbia, I remember uh, two years ago in 2016, I was a part of the Savvy Musician in Action's kind of startup boot camp mm -hmm. session and we sat in at City Hall and heard um, Mayor Benjamin speak about the vision that he has for our city and really wanting this to be a place where the talent stays, there's innovation and there's entrepreneurship growth. So I think not only are we pairing um, our generation with having permission and having the courage to just go ahead and do it, mm -hmm. we've got the the technology that's supporting us and giving us a voice where we can speak to other people, but locally we have the resources that are put in place like like the co-working space that I'm a part of, SoCo. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and that's a, it's a huge, huge help for me because that environment is what I was looking for when I compared my corporate America experience to working at a cubicle, a nice big cubicle, but it was mm -hmm. a cubicle nonetheless, yeah. uh, not really working with people or tapped in and needing to wear my specific outfit just for the sake of, of, of uniform and performance. <laughs> um, but when I go into SoCo and I can just be who I am, an artistic entrepreneur as well as an accountant, mm -hmm. and it doesn't make a difference, what we're focused on is building something greater than ourselves and being creative and, and just sitting around talking yeah. about how we can take all of our our businesses or what we're doing to the next level, that to me for Columbia is vital. So having the resources to help cultivate this and then pairing it with those that are going to be interested, because I mean entrepreneurship is not for everyone. I don't think that everyone yeah. needs to own their own business um, and it's okay to be an, an entrepreneur. I, I'm and one build of those people. I would not <laughs> fare well in that environment. And that's but. okay. It's just really figuring out. So all of my assessment for other people and for myself has been, it started internally. Mm -hmm. I recognize that this is what I needed and not to say that there's not a company that would value my skill sets and allow me to sit at the table, mm -hmm. I decided to do it on my own. But for some people, they need that, but we can't go far. We can only go yeah. as far as the resources will allow us. And That's thankfully, true. Columbia is 
is on the track to provide those resources for entrepreneurs like ourselves mm -hmm. and even having events like today uh, where we have here um, where we're located and there's resources coming together and saying how can we help so I'm glad to be a part of that for small That's business awesome. owners to say how can I help you and when I reached out to um, our community partners and saying, well what is the real need for small business owners here in Columbia now my services are not stationary to a physical location. I will mm -hmm. work, I've got clients in other states and I work remotely constantly, but I'm interested in serving the community that I'm a part of because that that's what I enjoy. Yeah. And I, I think technology has certainly enabled uh, the younger generation, you know, folks who have embraced it more to mm -hmm. the barriers to start your own business are lower than they mm -hmm. used to be and the ability to reach out to people and tap into um, your potential market or customers or, or even just people who would be interested in hearing what you're doing is greater than it used to be because you've got apps and social media platforms yeah. and, and websites are easier to make. People are doing them for their WordPress and on their own. So mm -hmm. the tools are there. But you still need those traditional things. You, you know, you're still going to want to have a solid business plan. You're still mm -hmm. going to want to understand, you know, how are you doing your marketing? Who are you marketing to and why? Are you getting to that target market? Um, you know, having access to people like yourself. Um, who can consult and kind of give you that third party neutral view and say, hey, have you considered this thing over here that could help? Um, you know, some of, some of the old ways are still good, but, um, you know, the technology's definitely mm -hmm. um, allowed people to kind of ramp up what they do yeah. and when they do it. And now they can, a lot of people are doing it from home or mm -hmm. from the co-working spaces, so mm -hmm. it's pretty awesome to see that. Um, now, just this past month, you got the opportunity um, to do a business pitch to mm -hmm. Michael Bloomberg and mm -hmm. a group of um, venture capitalists that he brought in to take a tour around the city of Columbia. So, um, how was that? <laughs> what, what's that? Are you nervous at all? Like, what, what was oh, that yeah. experience like? So, I mean, first, I want to say it was a great honor to have the experience when mm -hmm. I got the invitation to be in the room or be in the space when he was coming out. That was all really. Hey, he's that just I a billionaire. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> right? that's there's no pressure. The dude's just got more money than right. all of us combined. So, right. So, but when I got asked to share my story in two minutes, by the way, share my unique story and give some information about the business, that's not hard at all. No, no. Did um, you sleep at all the night before? Really what like the thing rehearsing, is, rehearsing, rehearsing. <laughs> I only had that night before to prepare for it. Um, and this is something that most people don't know. I actually came off of the stage performing. I, I had a dance performance right before I met with Michael Bloomberg. So wow. not to say that I'm not juggling a whole lot, but I am. But the experience itself, once it was actually happening, was great. I mean, he is very personable. He seemed like a really nice guy. What was more intimidating was the venture capitalist. And I was really impressed at the diversity that stepped off of that bus. I mean, mm -hmm. there were men, women from all backgrounds. It's true. And it was, it was really nice to see. And what kind of helped me to relax was that I, I knew I wasn't pitching for anything. I wasn't looking for anything in return besides the experience mm -hmm. and to meet them and to share my story. So it, it was a little easier for me because of that. But I was more nervous about the venture capitalist than anything because they listen to these the pitch. They understand mm -hmm. business. On, they can compute things so quickly when it comes to your model, how you scale, what you're doing, what you're not doing. So um, once it was happening and it was done, it was nice because I got a question from Michael, two questions from Michael Bloomberg and some advice. And then the uh, venture capitalist, Patrick, who gave me some advice, actually connected mm -hmm. with him. And he's followed up with me and connected oh, me that's to really cool. um, an e EVP at Salesforce mm -hmm. in California. So that might be a great connection. And he's given me some advice. Mm -hmm. So again, I didn't go there for a picture looking for anyone's money. But it was a great experience to have to, even within a quick turnaround, share my story. And then I had to ask myself, well, what is my unique story? Because often we go through our lives and things happen and we persevere through things yeah. and, and we're juggling so much and we don't think it's that impressive until you share your story with someone and like, wow, you're going through all of that plus you're building a business. Um, so I had to really sit down. I wrote out three or four pages of notes to prepare my two minute. That, that's what it takes though. You, you <laughs> got to start pitch. big and really distill it down to, yes. to the, the, the high value stuff. So yes. And 
and it, it, I was more excited to hear the stories of the other entrepreneurs who spoke, the other three. Um, so it was just a great experience, and I was honored to be there. Yeah. So I didn't really go there expecting too much besides the experience and yeah. being present. So it was it's great. Def it was, and for, even from my perspective, it was definitely cool to mm -hmm. just participate in yeah. and be involved in. So, yeah. um, you know, not every day you get that, you know, something like that happens in your hometown. So you, you talked a little bit about um, your dance background. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm always really fascinated by people who are, you know, owning and operating their own business, but who also have that, that cultural or social aspect, mm -hmm. you know, to their lives and what they bring to the table. And so you've got experience in dance and performing arts, and um, you even started your own performing arts program mm -hmm. called I Am Art back in 2015. Yep. So um, tell us about that, just because yeah. I, th I think that's cool and fascinating. So the arts is a passion of mine. Mm -hmm. um, naturally, I, I, I knew from a child that I was creative. My mom gave me the freedom to create things. So my room looked a An hot entrepreneur mess. who's creative, <laughs> there's no correlation with that. <laughs> right. Um, so I, uh, I Am Arts, the idea came out of an accounting class, actually. Mm -hmm. So I was. That's interesting. Yeah, I, the, <laughs> the assignment was to come up with a fictitious business to develop the financial statements for. Mm -hmm. We had to write a one-page paper and the financial statements, of course. And writing is not my thing. I would clean the house. I'll do laundry. I'll probably take the leaves off the roof before I have to sit down. And we're talking about a paper. I can write a mean email, and proposals are getting better too. But for me, writing wasn't something I was interested in. So I figured I need to do this create this business in something that I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. So it wound up being um, a creative arts center and I called it the Northeast Creative Arts. So the idea was for it to be a creative arts center offering dance, music, and visual art classes in addition to having an event space for mm -hmm. evening type of things. So in my mind's eye, that's what I saw, a brick and mortar offering classes and then what made it really different from dance studios or a music program is that the goal was to intertwine the discipline. So a child would, would get dance classes as their core and then also have visual art classes or music classes. What that has morphed into is a company that create, develops creative arts programming, partnering mm -hmm. with the, the organizations that are already here. So I partnered with um, the Art Museum one year. I have a partnership with Itology where, and this is the program we're currently running, we pair technology and creative arts expression. We've done two years of a week-long summer camp. The first year, they taught their students how to code sound, so they created and produced music for our performance, mm -hmm. as well as LED lighting for e-textile, so they put the lights on our shirts and um, coded some of the robots to move in our performance. My role was to direct it, what I taught my students at the art museum, so we had dance class at the art museum, was contemporary technique improvisational techniques, so learning how to move on the spot from your own body. Mm -hmm. And we also learned how to collaborate, so how to work with others for a common goal. And these are leadership skills that these students, yeah. 9 to 15, are learning how to work with each other and peers. And we worked four days to work up to a performance on the fifth day of the camp. Um, so it's they so had to, rich. They had to learn a lot in a little bit of time. Yes. It's a full all-day uh, summer camp, eight. Eight o'clock to five, yeah. <laughs> full day. Just like real adult life. We're right. going to give you this thing and we want it done yesterday, so right. go knock it out. But believe it or not, they they eat it up mm -hmm. because as as young children, they can learn so much than we, that we give them credit for, than we give them credit for. So this year, what we focused on was something similar, but the students, the technology students, learned how to code images. So mm -hmm. we took made it really simple for them. and. The creating these programs was in collaboration with ITology. So we came together December of last year. What's the theme? What's the goal mm -hmm. for this current year? Their students learn how to code uh, stick figures, pretty much like animation. Mm -hmm. So they had to make the stick figure move. And my students learned how to take the movement that they were seeing and pair it with their own movement. So by the end of our camp, we had moving figures that the middle schoolers coded and what we were able to do was go in and speak and give them language to creative movement. So doing something like this and turning your head is a mm -hmm. lot of lines of code that they had to learn and really understand how to fluidly put in place. I mean, these are people that are getting paid how much money to code animated figures on yeah. TV. So these are skill sets that they can take and move forward. And the greatest takeaway for me with this year's camp for the technology students was that 
they realized, and what I, my job was to help them realize they can be creative without being creative. So most, the average uh, tech person feels that they have no creative bone. They're just, they're just technology based. They're I don't, writing lines yeah. of code after lines of code. Right. Well, when I talked to one of the students, he showed me his little piece of animated figure doing very simple statotic movement. And then he showed me something he did when he had free time. And this two figures f fighting, hitting each other, flipping, moving, so much oh, movement man. around the screen. And I said, well, hey, what happened to our dancer? Why is the dancer standing in place, moving their hands up and down? Did you know that flipping, doing a split, turning is also movement and yeah. his dance is expressed? He's like, oh, okay. So he implemented that into his next- Start to put it next, all together. Yes. So to me, that's the greater purpose. Yes, we had a performance. But really, I Am Art is about the process. And my goal with I Am Art is just to create these programs and connect with the dance studios, connect with the organizations mm -hmm. that are teaching our students throughout the year the technique, and then give them the platform to express and see what they come up with. Yeah. So it's really about creating the program that they can have a say in as well. And as of right now, I Am Art is a one week the uh, dance and collaboration is a one week program throughout the just mm -hmm. for the year because that's what I can manage operating two businesses. Um, but it's yeah, it's, it's a, a passion not a heavy project. Lift. Huh? Yeah. It's not a heavy lift, just doing both of these things over here right. and, and raising my girls. So. But with what with what we have with that one program is so rich, it's it's too rich for me to just let go. Mm -hmm. So I'm okay with where it's at, it's manageable, it's a summer camp and Hopefully I can hire some folks to come in and really take ownership and love it just as much as I do so that mm -hmm. it'll bring on some more legs. Well, I, I think what you're doing with both of your endeavors, both your, your business um, that you're running on the day-to-day -day and your performance arts is like really good. And a, a lot of people Thank have you. trouble just, you know, juggling mm -hmm. the one job, much less doing that. So um, it's really awesome that you're you've got both of these things running and it sounds like you, you know they're both moving in a really positive direction and growing too so um i hope you know over the next year we we get to see more growth in both of those things and you continue to take those to the next level it so, sounds like they're both really awesome thank you and i i'll be honest with you i struggled with the identity of the two so i felt like i had to hide one in certain settings and not another so over the past year and a half I've become more comfortable when wearing both hats and it mm -hmm. being okay. I would show up in a business professional accounting setting, mention the arts, and like, oh, the arts, nonprofit, that's cute. Um, but really taking ownership of both sides and finding the best way yeah. to marry my skills, so the, the love for the arts as well as my business sense and my mm -hmm. accounting world, that owning my business seemed to be the perfect spot. Um, so I, I appreciate being able to speak about both and it yeah. be okay <laughs> well you know and yeah and even from the economic development perspective what we see you know companies want talent and education and, and jobs mm -hmm. and you know there's capital investment and those things but they still look at cities and your cultural amenities and your quality of mm -hmm. life you know it, it's not just a one-sided equation mm -hmm. anymore people want um, to go to locations you know where you can make a good living wage but there are things to do in the evenings and on the weekends yeah. and places to take your family to. So you really kind of have to have that, that balance overall as well as a, as a city overall. So, um, but it's pretty cool that you found like a successful way to play in both spaces <laughs> and, and still manage to make it work and keep your sanity at yeah. the same time. So yeah. it's pretty awesome. Hope to hear more great things from you over the next year on both of those fronts. But um, thanks a lot. It's Thank great you. having you and I appreciate you taking time out of your busy day. <laughs> Uh, to come in here and just talk with us and share about what you've got going on. So thank, thank you, Ryan. You. It's my pleasure.